Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, make sure to subscribe because the books can pay for themselves. Help us this out. So today's video is a video that I've been waiting to do for I think two years by this point. And that is my album review of Taylor's Taylor Swift, if you needed any more clarification, her new album, Lover. And it's actually not out yet as I'm filming this. It's about 8.17, so it should be out within the next 43 minutes. However, I am just going to prepare myself and look back at the classics. And by the classics, I mean Reputation. So I'm going to play Reputation for a little bit just to remind myself of how iconic it is to have a whole new album from her after quite a while of not having a whole new album from her. So, you know, I'm excited. I'm going to listen to Reputation now, and I'll come back to you guys when the album is here. Oh my god, 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 oh my god! Okay, so it is 8.52 p.m. Just so you all don't think I lie, I'm nervous. It's 8.52 p.m. and I just got the whole album. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Okay, I'm nervous. I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. I'm very, I'm very, very nervous for this record. I think this might be like one of the very few records where I don't know how the album starts. Like for Reputation, it started with Ready For It and we all knew that song before it came out. With 1989, Welcome to New York, we all knew how that was. With Red, actually with Red I didn't know how it started. With Red I didn't know how it was going to start. So since Red, we haven't had an album where we don't know what the intro is. Oh my god, I'm so, I'm so nervous. I am so nervous. I'm about to press play. We're gonna listen to it, and then I will come back to you guys in about an hour and two minutes to let you guys know my thoughts. 12 o'clock midnight. So about two hours, two and a half hours, one and a half hours have passed since I finished the album. Uh, <laughs> I always say this about every album review, but this time, I'm real this time. There is so many things I have to get through with this album. Because there is so much I want to talk about while I do my skincare. Also, I feel like my bathroom has become my unofficial filming space. Um, this is not my only filming space. This is just the most comfortable one in my whole bedroom and my whole house. Uh, so I'm going to do my skincare. I'm going to talk about it. The tears have gone. I have calmed down. No pun intended now. I'm a lot more calmer. I'm a lot more... Whew, okay, we can collect our thoughts. We can collect our opinions. That's what we're going to do. So... Okay, let's get started. I think the first thing I want to say is, wow, just wow, what an album. Like, that's literally written in my notes as, wow, what an album, because it's, it's such a beautiful album. Like, I just have to start this review by saying that, that it's just such a beautiful album from start to finish. I also believe this is her most conceptually complex album since Red. It's also her most thematically complex album since Red because I feel that a lot of her albums, if not, well not all, but a lot of her albums uh, have a recurring theme to them because the title is very bold therefore there can be a recurring theme to them like Fearless and Speak Now and 1989 and Reputation you know those albums had a recur- and her self-titled album <laughs> those albums had a recurring theme to them and those albums followed along uh, I guess a blueprint they had a blueprint and they followed along the blueprint whereas Red because the title was so simple there was so much to explore within just the color red. It's the same thing with this album, Lover. The title, Lover, is very simple. And I said that when she announced the title, that I thought the title was very simple. However, I did not expect for this album to have such a complex theme and such a complex concept, because it does. It doesn't just stay in one avenue the whole time. It explores so many other avenues, and I think Rolling Stone said it better than I can. It is artistically and musically liberating, and I think that's what I was trying to put here in my notes, but it, it never occurred to me until I saw them write it. I also think this record is very misleading in the best way possible, because she comes out with a single like Me, and You Need to Calm Down, which are, I guess, arguably the weakest songs on the record, but they're also the most 
I guess PG slash commercially friendly slash they're safe contenders for them to be hits. I think that's what I love about her is that she knows exactly what she's doing every single step of the way. Not a single thing is a not a single thing has a mistake. Not a single um, string is cut. Like she knows exactly what she wants and she takes out a picture perfect body of work that she envisioned in her head. And that's what I love about her. And I think I said this when Reputation came out is that. You know, she knows she's aware of every single step in her career. She's a really smart businesswoman. She's a really smart artist and she's a really smart songwriter. And that's what I respect and love about her. And the way that she misled us with the singles was just really impressive because she gave us, I guess, the weakest singles except for Lover. Uh, first, before listening to the whole body of work, which is just so complex and so huge and so big and monstrous in the best way possible. And it's 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 big and it's huge and you know when you listen to the album the first six seven songs are like hit after hit after hit after hit and i really do feel that this record solidified her as the princess of pop because i feel like that's what she is at this moment it's not just taylor swift another artist it's taylor swift the icon taylor swift the legend taylor swift the princess of pop that's how i envision her now after listening to this album not that i had any doubt of her status or stature or impact in the music industry prior to this but i feel like this record just solidified my perception that i had of her and it really solidified you know the title of princess of pop the songs in this are by far her best work as a songwriter since speak now it speak now came out nine years ago and obviously I'm not saying that her other albums are like horrible lyrically, they're all beautiful lyrical masterpiece, but Speak Now was a special album and I think to this day it remains a special album because it was an album that, you know, defied the odds that the media put on her for being, you know, so big at such a young age, you know, people really didn't expect much of her at 19, 20 because she was so young and you know instead of you know going the different route and hiring so many songwriters to help her out with that album she decided to take it up on herself and write it entirely and showed the world and the media that she is mature enough to handle certain topics and she's mature enough to write a whole album on her own and that's why that's by far one of my best, my, my favorite albums from her. That's by far one of my favorite albums from her. But then listening to this one, I'm kind of having second thoughts that maybe this one is my favorite album from hers because the lyrics are so beautiful and moving and powerful. And it's like every single line has a meaning and every single line, every single note, every single chord in each one of the songs tells an entire story. It's like the title is just the beginning of the story and then everything else is just a little fragment that paints an even bigger picture than what the title of the song actually is and i absolutely love that also lyrically i feel like this is her most provocative and powerful and emotional and soulful and vulnerable work that she has ever put out i think like i said there are so many layers to this record and you know there is you know a some hints of sexuality there is you know the power that she holds in the business there is you know the emotions of her to her lover the emotions of soulfulness you know the sorrowness and the pain she went through with her family and uh, soon you'll get better and in the vulnerability in some of the songs like lover and it's nice to have a friend and daylight and i just think it's by far some of her best work to date in a long long time this record also tackles on topics that she hasn't ever touched before in music or that she has barely touched on in records i think you know certain aspects of vulnerability she barely touches on in her music because i think certain topics she preferred to keep private before but i feel like now you know she's 29 about to, she's pushing 30 and i feel like She's at a place in life where she wants to be more vulnerable with us, her fans, and she wants to open up a little more and let people more in depth into her life. And she has, I think in the past, released 
as emotional and as vulnerable songs as soon you'll get better like Ronin I think that's the big one that pops up to mind is Ronin and also the best day I mean that song just like gets me to tears and you know I think she wants to tackle it more now and I think as I said before you know it's because of that that this is her most triumphant work yet it's 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 powerful it's incredible it's beautiful and you know I think the sweet thing about this whole record is that it's a title lover and it is very complex and it is very multi-layered in its theme but at the core of it it's probably one of her happiest albums that she has ever released and I think the sweetest thing about it is that she found the pure love she wrote about in the red booklet and I have that booklet so I just don't know where it is <laughs> I don't know where all my physical copies went so I have to find it but in the booklet and people brought it up on Instagram and Twitter that she writes in the red booklet which I think is her saddest record to date she writes that maybe one day she'll write about the pure love that's golden and I think she might have found it. I really do. And that's the sweetest thing of this all is that I think she might have found that pure love that is golden. And not just I say it, she says it herself in the record as well. There is, I think it's in Daylight where she says, I thought love you, I thought love was burning red, but now it is golden. I think it's golden like the sun or something like that. I forgot the lyrics and I'm so horrible. But it's something along the lines of that. And I just thought that was beautiful. And also the, song, the, the album title song, Lover is just by far one of her most romantic bodies of work ever and I am a sucker for love songs that are beautiful and soulful and vulnerable like a lot of the songs in Casey Musgraves album Golden Hour like Butterflies and Happy and Sad and Love is a Wild Thing you know those songs and Golden Hour and those songs are just so beautiful and soulful and they're happy songs they're love songs and I think this song kind of struck at my heartstrings in that same way that those songs did and it's just so beautiful and so magical and I get teary just thinking about that song because it's so beautiful. This album definitely jumps around a lot. It's not like there's a section for ballads, there's a section for hits, there's a section for nice songs, there's a section for sexual songs. It jumps around a lot. It goes from like hits to like soulful songs to like ballads to another hit and I think that also solidifies what a lover is, what be a lover is in your life, is that it's not just one lane and then another lane, then another lane. From the perspective that I saw within how she placed the tracks on the record, is that, you know, what being a lover is, is complex. And it's not just, you know, today we're taking the sexual street, then tomorrow we're taking the romantic street, then tomorrow we're taking the fight street, then tomorrow we're taking Cornelia street, and then the next day we're taking the we are the happy go lucky couple with billion dollars. No. Being a lover is, you know, going through, you know, adversities together and cherishing the happy moments together. But at the same time, you find yourself in the hardships of being in a relationship and working through it and you know at the end of the day hopefully being more in love than you were before but at the same time you know tackling on together you know family issues and family problems and family adversities that come your way you know being together that's you know what being a lover is is being there for your significant other through the happiest times through the times where you're so happy you could cry to the times where you uncontrollably cry of sadness and pain, to the times where you two disagree, through the times where you two are away from each other, through the times where you are more together than ever, through the times when you two are in bed. That's what being a lover is, and I feel like she sought out to write a record that, you know, talked about just that, about what being a lover truly is, and I think she encapsulated that meaning and that definition so beautifully in this record through the many layers of the songs and also how she placed the tracks on the record because I could think of another way she could have placed the tracks on the record but I feel like it would not have made as much sense as this track listing did and I think you know personally as a songwriter myself and as somebody who has released two albums <laughs> only two albums as of now you know I know how to you know track list an album and I know the importance of how to place songs in certain you know, parts of an album, how to really be able to tell a story from start to finish in a record. And I feel like she perfected that and she solidly did that 
beautifully. I think she knew how to how to place the songs in this album, and I absolutely love that. Also, just like a funny little side note, <laughs> um, this to me, this album and like anything she releases is like the musical equivalent to the Avengers being released because the Avengers are big. Like when they were when they were releasing movies, because I think they're done now. Like it was like an event. Like people got off work to go see the film. Like people would stay at the theater like super late in the midnight. I think for Endgame, they had like screenings running throughout the whole night for like 24 hours straight for three days because it was that big. I think this record is just the equivalent of the Avengers because it's so big, everyone's getting it, everyone's buying it, everyone is, you know, going to receive their orders tomorrow, everyone's going to go to Target to buy it. You know, it's big and it's huge and I'm so proud of her for having that same impact that she had with 1989 and still keeping up with that impact to this day. It just goes to show the power of Taylor Swift. Um, this is the musical equivalent to the Avengers, and I think in this record there is something for everyone. I really do believe that. I believe that there is something for everyone because there is so many layers, and I think I've said that so many times already in this album review, but it's true. There is so many layers to this record, and I feel, I truly firmly feel that there is something for everybody. There's some something for someone who loves the ballads, there's something for someone who loves those gritty songs like I did something bad. There's something like that for somebody in here. There's something for those who love the more mellow songs or something for those who love the powerful anthems. You know, there's something for everyone and I absolutely love that she included that because I think a lot of people were skeptical about a title like Lover and then hearing the first four songs that came out, they were like, ooh, I'm not gonna be able to relate to this because I'm not, I don't have a boyfriend, or I don't have a girlfriend, or I'm not married. But you know, all in all, I've never been in a relationship and I absolutely love this record and I think there's something in it for me as well. And you know, I think, hold on, as I put my creme de la mer on my face, let's all collectively say a big thank you to Joe Alwyn for being her lover and for being her significant other, for being the muse, the inspiration behind some of her most beautiful work to date. Just like truly, I'm not just saying this as a meme, I'm not just saying this trying to be funny, but like truly, truly thank you because you know, she's never released something like this before that is so happy and that is so upbeat and hopeful and inspiring and beautiful and colorful and, you know, just a big thank you. And all in all, I want to give this album confidently, I want to give this album a 10 out of 10. It is perfect in every way possible. It is splendid, it is gorgeous, it is beautiful, it is painful, it is, you know, wonderful, it is colorful, it is majestic, it is so many terms. It's just such a beautiful work of art and I truly, truly encourage you all to not just stream the record but to also purchase it wherever you get music, especially for the biggest reason is that this is the first album out of the seven albums that she has released today. This is the first album that she fully owns by herself and I think that is a huge step in the right direction and I, you know, as much as I respect her as a songwriter and as an artist, I also respect her views on the music industry because I too, you know, I believe that every artist, everyone who writes their own music, does their own music, produces their own music, you know, comes up with the concepts for music videos, I believe that every artist who writes the songs, composes, records the songs, I believe that every artist who owns their music should own their music regardless if they are in a record label or not so i firmly believe in that and i hope you guys go out and buy the album and stream it and support her and now the big thing i wanted to get to in this album review is that my thoughts and opinions on the stella mccartney collection have changed just a little bit and the big reason is the pricing so the pricing shockingly is not $500 a shirt. It is actually, almost everything is under $100, which is crazy and which is insane. If it is up to par with the Stella McCartney um, quality, uh, there are two pieces in this collection that are the bomber jacket, which is the one thing I wanted. Like, out of everything, that is the most beautiful piece in it all, and I really wanted it. It is $1,995. And the handbag, the crossbody handbag with the graffiti Stella X Taylor, 
is $795, but aside from that, everything else is under $100, so it is not crazy expensive, but it also isn't affordable. It's right in the middle, so I think it gives everyone a fair shot to be able to purchase it and get something that they love. I also think she mentioned that every single day they're going to be putting new pieces on sale. Uh, today's pieces, I didn't really like that much. I'm going to wait till tomorrow, see if I like something. I am actually going to be purchasing something because I want to see the material. I want to see if it is up to par with the same quality as Stella McCartney clothing. And, you know, I think the Lover's Lounge live stream also gave me, you know, an idea as to the inspiration behind this clothing line. Because I think like a lot of people, we wanted something that was a little more high-end luxury fashion design like and then Stella came on the Lover's Lounge live stream and you know told everybody that her objective wasn't to make you know you know similar designs to what she usually makes in her clothing it was to create a merch line for an artist and you know seeing it in that way I understand everything and I get everything now so you know I will be getting a piece I will be getting a piece or two from the collaboration and see if I like it. I might come back to you guys with a video on it to tell you guys about the quality and the wearability and everything about it if you want it. Uh, but with that being said, this record is beautiful. It's phenomenal. It's gorgeous. I hope you guys purchase it. And with that being said, I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you very, very much for sticking by and watching this video and if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and comment down below your thoughts on the album, your thoughts on the clothing line, your thoughts on everything that's going on. And as well, subscribe if you're new because the bills get paid for themselves. Help us this out and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Goodbye.